Thank you, Mr. Thorne. Uh, as an actor, <laughs> watching in those days, um, did you think that there was a part that I uh, oh, yeah. showed that you've completely thrown me out? <laughs> when watching Doctor Who, when you were in that, <laughs> before you were in Doctor Who, did you think, ah, that's a show I'd like to be in? Yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Larger than life characters and so much fun to play. Because, you know, you can go, well, within reach as well, if you like, and shout, and wave your arms about, and stand about. They get it's just great fun. Not unless you're just You have to be kept in check, though. Uh, only, uh, funnily enough, there was somebody from upstairs came to a run to, to a, one of the studio days and said that that was when he takes his thing off and roars or shouts or screams and screams or whatever he does, that that was far too much. Everybody would be terrified and they would watch and they'd all write in and everything, could you tone it down? And I remember saying, no, I can't, this is the way we've rehearsed it, this is the way we're going to do it. Because if you tone it down, something like that, with a climactic moment, it means everything before it has to be toned down. And so the whole thing goes and eventually You've got nothing left of what you've started with. So I'm glad to say we didn't do that. Good, so my friends, it was fabulous. Did you watch them when they were broadcast? <clears throat> yes, I did. Impressed? You're never impressed by yourself. No, I was impressed with other people. My children were impressed. <laughs> but there's always room for improvement. I mean, you know. More so if an actor speaks. says I was impressed and I was satisfied, they're lying. Because Fair enough. Nobody's ever said it. Yes. Do you have a video, video collection of the Doctor Who series? No, I don't. I have a copy of The Demons. That's all that I have. You do realise that next week, 50 copies <laughs> of the <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, uh, gentlemen, uh, and then you said, yes. Um, when, you, when they took Omega's head off, the other two doctors took Omega's head off and there's nothing there. Three you doctors, still, you're not doing well, are you? So <laughs> the in, in three doctors, the second and third doctors, have been up removed the head, haven't they? And um, there's nothing there towards the end. Yeah. Were you in there and, it was, uh, and the shoulders rubbed there, or were you, had you vacated the costume by then? No, I was there with a yellow sock over my head. All right. <laughs> which then, against the yellow background, and then it therefore disappeared, ah. so you couldn't see Like blue screen and yellow. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Um, what have work have you done outside of the oh. I've done, well, I've done, worked in most media. <coughs> of late, I've done a great deal of radio, and I now do a lot of uh, book recordings, commercial book recordings, so fun and reach, of course, <coughs> which I enjoy very much. Beep, the sheep pink. Did that? Yeah. <laughs> Reaction to <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Just by your children, it's wonderful. <laughs> John Pertwee took home the statue of Bob from the Bagans. You said you wanted to keep your teeth. Did you actually keep anything from any of your stories? No, I didn't. No. I wanted the helmet from Omega as well, but they wouldn't let me have that time. I suppose if I'd stuffed it up my jumper, I might I don't, did the, did the same <coughs> thing that you wear the same? They thing. melted it. They melted yeah. it. Uh, so they did, uh, yeah, they melted it, didn't they? They sort of blew it off for you. Yeah, so I could have taken it, no one would have known, wouldn't they? Well, no, no, they no, no. it wasn't the original Omega mask, it was a, a rubbery, a one. rubbish one. Oh, yes. Uh, when you heard you got the part of Azel, and how long did it take you to put in the makeup costume to make you up to the part? About an hour and a half, two hours, I think. Mean. You have to write before everyone else. Yeah, yeah. And hence, I'd had more copy than anybody else. It's just a good story about the thing. A few more questions before we finish up the splendid. Uh, don't be shy. Come on, you paid your money. Because it's going to go, and you're going to go, oh, we should ask that question. <coughs> Come on. Yes, you're very well. How exactly full are you? Six, four and a half. <laughs> well, I like your coat seconds. Yeah. <laughs> right, I'm very Yes, sir. Um, we said earlier, oh. I think finally, Ring Doctor Mac is going to be slightly different because it has sort of gradually changed. 
Uh, what did you think of the uh, 96 Borgan movie? I didn't like it at all. It was, it was crap. <laughs> 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 I think there's something in the same spirit. Mm. It was not in the same spirit. There was no fun about it. There was no jokiness. All the doctors have had a sort of mercurial, smiley, elfin quality, even though they've knocked it themselves up. But you know what I mean, that sort of quality. And this was too serious for words, and too. And they were terrified of, of turning off all the adult people who watched it by thinking that it would be. to do that would be defeat or strain, I think. So I don't think it worked. I mean, I, nothing against anybody who was in it. They were directed as they were directed, but I, I think it was a mistake. Would you like to work with the Daleks, Jim? It did? Yes, I did. Uh, with the, that's the Ogre one, yes. 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 Field again, a hundred no. lights. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, some more questions. We're going to finish up. Yes. What made you want to go into acting, and what was your first professional job? I was. My father was a, a clergyman in a village in Lancashire, and uh, there's a great affinity between the church and acting. I'm told. However, I was going to go to university after but instead I went and did national service as we all had to do. And during national service I did a lot of, in the Navy this was, I did a lot of acting in the Navy, finally not on an ocean, now that, an aircraft carrier called the Ocean, and got the taste for it and thought this is the life for me and this is what I want to do. And so I came back and auditioned for drama school and that's what the first part I played was the butler in Agatha Christie's Spider's Web at Southport Rep. Which drama school did you go to? Seven. What, what drama school did you go to? Rather. Ah, oh, nothing but the best for us. <laughs> Who was in your class? Uh, Edward de Souza, Christopher Benjamin, Sean Phillips. Um, I think that's most of the ones who survived. Yeah, ones who survived. Well, it's been a. Sp oh, my! Well, it's either had a, 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 a head that I'm going to finish, and they all start going well. well. On you go. Following the previous question, I think, from the, um, many actors of your generation came up through a sort of service background and then went into acting. Has that affected you? Are acting now? What from doing national service in the Navy? Mm -hmm. I don't think so, because after <coughs> I went to a minor public school, and that fits you for everything from the Navy to prison. <laughs> no, I don't think it's effective. The only thing that, that I would say going back to drama school was that it was ironical that we were all taught to lose our accents and I had a slight North Country accent I'm told at the time but I refused to believe it because I thought my father's a bastard and I can't speak like that. I must have a wonderful voice. And you're, we had to eliminate all accents. Nowadays they don't do that. You learn RP, receive okay. pronunciation, as another accent. However, we all got rid of our accent. Those of us who had accent. I went into the loo in the flat I shared in the Vale of Health and Hampstead in the cellar with Christopher Benjamin and locked the door and said, when I come out, I'm never going to speak like this again. And I'm going to speak like this now, now on, which I did. And um, what am I doing? Oh, yes, that's right. We were all taught to do this. And of course, we came out of the drama school in 1950. This intake, 57, was it? 57, straight into the full flowering of the kitchen sink. And what did they want? North Country Act. <laughs> <laughs> All just been, you know, spent two years. Uh, John Osborne's got a lot of What an irony, yeah. A couple more questions before we. Anyone not asked a question? Come on. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that you were going to be in the country. Did your father see you play the song? And so what did he make of it? No, he didn't, sadly. He died when I was 17, unfortunately, so uh, he didn't. Mm -hmm. My mother was quite impressed by it, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in spite of everything. Uh, Come on. Yes, yes. We have a problem struggling on transport, but it was a height. <laughs> 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 I did actually go in a submarine once during my national service, and that was very difficult. I banged my head a great deal. <laughs> Only briefly this was for a trip across the bay and all sorts of speed, but it, it was not a pleasant experience. They didn't suffer, did they go under? 
Yeah, but I mean, the, the, the walking about in it right. is, for somebody of my size, very difficult because it's full of things that you to keep going on. Yes, I, I mean, on the tube sometimes, it's very difficult to bang my head on the rails. But, well, one of Doctor Who's greatest villains, Mr. Stephen Hawking.